Have you ever wondered why people have different skin and hair colors? Well, it all starts with tiny cells in our skin and hair follicles known as melanocytes. These miniature factories produce a pigment called melanin, which is responsible for the color of our skin, hair, and even eyes. But here's the twist. Not everybody's melanocytes produce the same amount or type of melanin. This variation results in the beautiful diversity of skin and hair colors we see around the world. In individuals with darker skin, typically seen in African, African American, and some South Asian populations, melanocytes are like super factories, churning out more melanin, particularly a type known as eumelanin. This increased melanin production contributes to the darker skin tones associated with these groups. An added perk of having more melanin in the skin is increased protection against ultraviolet or UV radiation damage, which is abundant in regions with high sun exposure. On the other hand, in Caucasian individuals, melanocytes produce less melanin compared to those with darker skin. As a result, their skin tones are lighter. Caucasian skin primarily produces pheomelanin, a type of melanin which gives a yellow to red hue, as opposed to eumelanin, which imparts a brown to black hue. Now let's talk about hair. Melanocytes in hair follicles produce melanin that imparts color to the hair. Just like skin, black or darker hair contains higher levels of eumelanin, while lighter hair contains less eumelanin or higher levels of pheomelanin. Therefore, in races with predominantly darker skin, such as many African and Asian populations, black or dark hair is more common due to higher eumelanin production. In a nutshell, the differences in skin and hair color across different races are largely determined by the type and amount of melanin our melanocytes produce. This is a result of both our genes and evolutionary adaptation to different environmental conditions. So, melanocytes and melanin are the key players in the color game of our skin and hair. They're the reason we have such a vibrant and diverse palette of human skin and hair colors to admire. But hold on, it's not just about more or less melanin, the type of melanin also matters. Yes, you heard it right. There are two types of melanin that play a key role in determining the color of our skin and hair. Eumelanin and pheomelanin. Eumelanin, the type more prevalent in individuals with darker skin, gives a brown to black hue. It's the main player behind the darker skin tones seen in African, African American and certain South Asian populations. You can think of eumelanin as the protective shield, providing increased defense against damaging ultraviolet radiation, particularly in regions where the sun isn't shy about making its presence felt. But what about hair color? Well, eumelanin doesn't stop at skin. It's also the driving force behind black or darker hair. In races with predominantly darker skin, such as many African and Asian populations, you'll find black or dark hair is more common, thanks again to higher eumelanin production. On the other side of the spectrum, we have pheomelanin. This type of melanin gives a yellow to red hue and is the primary producer of color in lighter skin tones. If you've ever wondered what's behind the fair skin of Caucasians, look no further than pheomelanin. This melanin type is less abundant, resulting in lighter skin tones. Of course, pheomelanin also has a role in hair color. Lighter hair contains less eumelanin and higher levels of pheomelanin. So, those blonde locks or fiery red tresses. You can thank pheomelanin for that. In a nutshell, while melanocytes produce melanin in everyone, the type and amount of melanin produced can vary greatly. 
It's this variation in eumelanin and pheomelanin production that results in the diverse range of skin and hair colors we see in the world today. From the deepest ebonies to the lightest ivories and the entire spectrum in between, it's all down to these two types of melanin. So it's the type of melanin that gives us the spectrum of skin and hair colors we see around us. Now, you might be wondering what controls this melanin production? Well, that's where our genes come into play. You see, it's our genetic blueprint, the DNA that we inherit from our parents, that primarily dictates how our melanocytes function and how much melanin they produce. Let's dive a bit deeper. Our bodies contain numerous genes that regulate melanocyte function and melanin production. These genes serve as a kind of instruction manual for our cells, telling them how to behave and what substances to produce. When it comes to melanocytes, these instructions determine whether they'll produce more eumelanin, leading to darker skin and hair, or more pheomelanin, resulting in lighter tones. Now, as we all know, not all instruction manuals are the same. That's where mutations or variations in these genes come into the picture. Sometimes a gene might have a slight variation, kind of like a typo in our genetic instruction manual. These variations can lead to differences in how melanocytes function and how much melanin they produce. This can result in a spectrum of skin and hair colors from the deepest ebony to the fairest blonde. These genetic variations are the reason why, even within the same family, siblings can have different skin and hair colors. It's all about the combination of genes they inherit from their parents. In fact, it's these genetic differences that contribute to the beautiful diversity we see in human skin and hair colors across the globe. So, in essence, our genes are the conductors orchestrating the symphony of melanin production in our bodies. They determine whether our melanocytes produce more eumelanin or pheomelanin, and how these pigments are distributed in our skin and hair. In conclusion, our genetic makeup plays a crucial role in determining our skin and hair color. It's quite fascinating, isn't it? how the subtle interplay of genes and cells can result in such diverse and beautiful skin and hair hues. So, our genes have a significant say in our skin and hair colour. But there's more to this colour story. Our environment also plays a part. Imagine our planet with its myriad climates and landscapes. In regions closer to the equator, the sun blazes down relentlessly, bathing the land in intense ultraviolet or UV radiation. Under such conditions, having darker skin, rich in melanin, especially eumelanin, provides a sort of natural sunscreen. This increased melanin production acts as a shield, absorbing and dispersing up to 90% of UV radiation, thereby reducing the risk of skin damage and skin cancer. Now, let's travel farther from the equator, where the sun's rays are less direct and UV radiation is less intense. Here, having lighter skin, which produces less melanin, offers an advantage. Lighter skin allows more UV radiation to penetrate, which aids in the synthesis of vitamin D, a crucial nutrient for bone health and immune function. This is why populations native to these regions, such as those in Northern Europe, often have lighter skin. But what about hair color? Well, the same principles apply. Darker hair, rich in eumelanin, is more common in populations from regions with high UV exposure, while lighter hair, with less eumelanin or more pheomelanin, is more prevalent in regions with lower UV exposure. This intricate dance between our biology and the environment resulted in the breathtaking diversity of skin and hair colors we see in human populations today. 
It's a testament to our species' incredible ability to adapt and thrive in a wide range of environmental conditions. Thus, nature cleverly adapted our skin and hair color to our environment. Now, let's delve into an inevitable part of life, the graying of hair. The fascinating journey of our hair color begins and ends with the microscopic world of melanocytes. These tiny cells housed in our hair follicles are the artists behind our hair's vibrant hues, tirelessly producing and transferring two types of pigments, eumelanin, the master of black and brown shades, and pheomelanin, the creator of blonde and red tones. But as we age, these melanocytes start to lose their vigor. Their productivity in painting our hair with melanin dips gradually becoming less active, and eventually they clock out for good. This decline in melanin production leads to a loss of hair pigment, which in turn manifests as the graying or whitening of our hair. It's a slow and steady process, a subtle shift from color to gray, that's as much a part of life as the changing of seasons. However, the timing and pace of this transition aren't the same for everyone. It's here that our genetic blueprint steps in, wielding significant influence. Some of us might notice the first strands of grey as early as our 20s or 30s, while others might proudly sport their natural hair colour well into their golden years. It's all written in our genes, the unique code of life that makes us who we are. But it's not all about genetics. Our environment and lifestyle choices also play a crucial role in this narrative. Stress, for instance, is a notorious culprit, often associated with premature greying. Likewise, smoking has been linked to an early onset of those silver strands. In the grand scheme of things, even when our hair turns gray, the melanocytes are still there, nestled in our hair follicles. They're just dormant, taking a well-deserved break after years of diligent service. So, as we age, our hair tells a tale of time, genetics and lifestyle, all through the lens of our melanocytes. If you enjoyed video and want to learn more about the fascinating science of our bodies, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.